Giant boy detective, show me this mighty warrior you speak of. Okay, but don't be judgmental. You have to keep an open mind. I always do. You're kidding, right? Uh, you're the one who's always judgmental. Are, are you insane? You're always like, hey, fella, well, you might want to roll up the windows in this neighborhood. Am I doing it now? <laughs> no. Then show me the friggin' warrior already. What, behind the little kid? Hello Internet, my name is Billy and this is your Guide to the Ventureverse, a YouTube series in which I look at each episode of the Venture Brothers and give a brief synopsis, point out interesting facts, talk about its place in the greater canon of the show, and finish it off with some personal thoughts about the episode. In today's video we will discuss Season 2, Episode 13 of the Venture Brothers, Showdown at Cremation Creek Part 2. This episode first aired on October 15, 2006, and was written by Jackson Public and Doc Hammer. Let's get into it. Picking up immediately where the last episode left off, the wedding guests all flee, making room for a giant showdown between Phantom Limb and the Monarch with some assistance from the Venture family and David Bowie. Dean has his own adventure in his mind thanks to a gas leak in the engine room. Meanwhile, we also follow the Order of the Triad on their way to assist with the battle. Just to get it out of the way, the following lines are all references to David Bowie's song titles, album titles, or lyrics. My wife for the hub Comes from the song, Oh You Pretty Things. Ding dong, the queen bitch is dead. References both the Klaus Nomi song, Ding Dong, and the David Bowie song, Queen Bitch. It won't be a corner of the globe, it'll be safe film, so I sick the diamond talks on his scent. Diamond Dogs is both the name of a David Bowie song and the album on which it appears. Also, we'll eventually get to see those Diamond Dogs. Dean's psychotic break, hallucination thing has a lot in common with the movie The NeverEnding Story. The monarch refers to Klaus Nomi and Iggy Pop as Taco and Spicoli. Taco refers to the one-hit wonder singer who did a cover of Putting on the Ritz in the 80s, and Spicoli refers to the character from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Doc and Jackson talk on the commentary about the whereabouts of the monarch's cocoon. Because in the pilot, there was, the monarch's cocoon was in... The Grand Canyon? It looked like it. Yeah. It just looked like the Grand Canyon. So at one point I said it was in the Grand Canyon. And then it just became a running gag with Jackson and I that he was parked in a big tourist area. When he's parked. When he's parked. So, you know, kids would pull up in their station wagon <laughs> and just look over the gorge and see a cocoon hovering. Inconspicuous. Yeah. <laughs> when Brock says, Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. <laughs> It's a direct quote from Star Wars. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. I probably should have mentioned this in the last episode, but the uniform that Hank wears is a nod back to the fuzzy henchman uniforms that were previously only seen in the pilot. In Dean's mind, Billy Quizboy takes on the role of Giant Boy Detective. Giant Boy Detective is the star of Dean's favorite book series, which you can be seen reading going back to careers in science. And of course, the big reveal that David Bowie is the Sovereign happens in this episode. The Ventureverse is a strange place. I'm not going to shock anyone by saying this, but Jackson and Doc know how to write one hell of a finale. Pretty much every proper finale has been epically awesome. Quick side note, after season 4, I consider the season 5 finale to be all this in Gargantua 2, the season 6 finale to be the first three episodes of season 7, and the season 7 finale to be the as of now unreleased movie. Each season's episodes are like a bunch of Christmas presents. Some are better than others, but they're all rad because you're a kid and they're presents. But each season finale is like that last giant gift that your parents hid until you were done opening all your other gifts. The big one. The bike. The puppy. The Nintendo 64. The show has clearly evolved from its Johnny Quest parody roots at this point, but it only gets farther and farther away as the show continues to build upon its in-universe lore, which in turn makes the show harder and harder for new fans to jump into or for casual fans to keep up with. In a way, it's a show built for the era of binge-watching, way before the era of binge-watching. But season two is a pretty perfect marriage of episodic jump-in-at-any-time episodes, like season one, and the elaborate world-building of season three and beyond. Season two works so well as a whole because it keeps the purity of season one, 
but elevates the quality of animation, storytelling, and humor. I love season two of the Venture Brothers because I love the Venture Brothers. As always, thank you for watching and go Team Venture. Tune in next week for Shadow Man 9 and the Cradle of Destiny. If you dug this video, share it with a friend. And if there was some huge glaring thing that I missed in this video, follow me on Instagram at Ventureverse Guide to see these videos a week early and offer your input before I upload the final product. See you in 2022.